Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Body Wisdom Podcast. Today is going to be a really nourishing episode, and I think it's going to be helpful for so many of you. We are going to be talking about rumination and how you can come back into your body so that you can do more being and feeling than overthinking and ruminating on things. And we're going to get into a bit of neuroplasticity as well, because that is truly how you are going to be able to go from feeling like you are overthinking everything, feeling like you're stuck in these negative, mostly negative thought loops, analyzing situations that have been going on for maybe even months, weeks, years, and moving more into an embodied place within yourself. And what really inspired this conversation today is I've been talking about this a lot with my clients. We've been talking so much about rumination, why we overthink so much about things and why it can sometimes be so difficult to move from overthinking into feeling and into surrendering into those sensations that often come with ruminating. And I also did a poll on Instagram a few days ago where I asked you all, How often do you find yourselves ruminating on things? And nobody voted never. And I appreciate that honesty because, you know, we are human and we do go through periods of our lives where we sometimes are overthinking things, overanalyzing things, and even to the point where we are ruminating on things. And most people picked the option where they're either ruminating every day and they feel like they wake up and they are sometimes even paralyzed with these thoughts that are going over and over and over again in their brains. And then a majority of people said that every couple of weeks something happens and then they ruminate about it for a few days. So I definitely think we should have a conversation about this and talk a little bit about why I personally am so passionate about helping people step out of those rumination cycles, we'll call it, and into the sensations of their body, into the safety of their body so that they can feel more and think less. And it sounds simple. And honestly, it really can be a simple process. It's my greatest passion when I help my clients and I see that aha moment click in their brains and in their bodies when they are overthinking things and step into more safety in their body and how much that really just changes their lives. And it's not a perfect process. It's not like we are trying to move into this place where we never are overthinking things, but being able to recognize when overthinking and rumination is taking over and how they can soothe their bodies so that they can step more into feeling. And like I mentioned, we're going to talk a lot about neuroplasticity today because in order to change our behaviors, we have to be aware of the process of neuroplasticity, which is the process that your brain goes through when it creates new pathways. And I could talk about neuroplasticity for days. If you don't know this already, I am an occupational therapist and I have been studying and practicing OT for over a decade. One of my biggest passions and where I started in my career 10 years ago was with adults and neurological disorders. I learned so much about neuroplasticity during that time and just a little bit of a breakdown of just so you know, why an occupational therapist, somebody that has worked with adults in neuro rehab is what it's called, and why I help people that have gone through trauma or any kind of experience in life and how we are able to create new neural pathways in their brains so that they can feel more embodied because it really is such a connection. The work that I do with my clients that have experienced a spinal cord injury or a brain injury often looks a little different than how I work with women with embodiment, but there is a lot of crossover and it's just really interesting to know about. So when you experience, let's say a brain injury or a stroke, there is damage done to your brain. Depending on where exactly the stroke or the brain injury happened, it's going to damage certain parts of your brain, either through blunt force or through when you have a stroke, there's a blockage and blood flow to that specific part of your brain. And it's going to affect 
people in various ways because if you don't know this already, our brain is very complex. There are different areas of our brain that are responsible for movement, thinking, feeling, swallowing, so many body functions that you don't even think about. And when I work with my patients and my clients in this field, we work on the neuroplasticity of their brain. We help them create new neural pathways so that they can get out of bed and walk again, that they can think clearly and be able to move from jumbled thoughts into thinking more clearly so that they can eventually maybe be able to have a job again, be able to drive again, be able to take care of themselves again because those parts of the brain were affected by either the brain injury or the stroke. This is a really cool fact. Neuroplasticity, so the ability to create new neural pathways in your brain, wasn't really something that was practiced in our field until the 90s. So way back in the day, which is crazy because I'm a 90s kid and so now I'm like back in the day and (laughs) before the 90s. Oftentimes, when somebody had a brain injury or stroke, it was, okay, you need to be on bed rest, ease into activity, don't do too much, because at that point in time, we didn't think that our brains could change. Nowadays, if you are in the field of medicine or if you have been with a loved one that has experienced a brain injury or stroke or spinal cord injury, we are getting those patients up out of bed as soon as they are medically cleared as soon as the neurologist has been able to see that they have been stabilized and that other parts of their body are safe enough to get out of bed. It's like sometimes within hours, we go to the patient's room, get them out of bed, get them moving so that we can take advantage of the early mobility and take advantage of the healing that can partake in the brain in these very early stages. It's very critical. So when you think about that kind of trauma to the brain, that can sometimes be a little bit more obvious. It's really obvious when you have a stroke or a brain injury that there has been some damage done to the brain. However, trauma and various life issues that we go through. And I really am trying to think of a different word of trauma because sometimes I think that people can often believe, well, I've never been through anything traumatic. They think, you know, I don't necessarily believe that I have been through anything traumatic, so that might not resonate with me. However, it's really just anything in life. Our brains are so malleable for the first 26 years of our lives. Our frontal lobe, which is the part of our brain that is responsible for higher thinking, decision-making, it's the executive functioning part of our brain where we develop a little bit more control of our emotions is not developed until we are 26 years old. And I personally believe that it might not even be fully developed in some people until maybe a few years after that as well. So it's important to remember that anything we have experienced in life, whether or not it was something really big or all of these small little things that we experience in life, maybe it was inconsistent caregivers, maybe our parents weren't there as much as we desired them. And so we kind of have that little or deep wound in our bodies that we are not worthy. It can be a number of things. So these things that alter your brain are not as obvious maybe as a stroke is where, you know, one side of your body is weaker or paralyzed than the other or a brain injury where the same thing happens. And it can be maybe a little bit more obvious, but there are certain parts of your brain that are affected and neuroplasticity is something that is incredibly healing. And that's truly the work that I do with my clients. I help them feel things differently in their body. So when I work with clients on getting into their bodies and feeling overthinking, so we're going to like this embodied state where we are feeling sensation instead of thinking about things, a lot of times it doesn't make sense. And I always remind my clients, it doesn't have to make sense. I want you to just feel it. So we create the capacity, the safety in their bodies so that they can 
feel it. And that's why oftentimes I think that healing and somatic work can a lot of times come across as like this woo-woo process and this process where it's like all energy healing and all of that because it doesn't make sense. And we are creatures that want to talk things over, want to fully understand things. And this work is not really something that you understand. And I think that as somebody that has come from the background of being an OT and neuro rehab and seeing somebody go from being totally paralyzed to being able to walk again just solely through neuroplasticity, you can see that. Another thing that's important to understand about neuroplasticity is that our brains and our bodies are always trying to take the path of least resistance. That way we can focus on other things like getting food, healing, doing things for ourselves, we're always kind of taking this path of least resistance. So our brains and our nervous systems will continue to choose things that are comfortable versus and familiar versus doing something totally different. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, because I first want to talk about rumination and overthinking and what that all means, because I know that so many of you find yourselves in these cycles of ruminating on things. And I know that there have been certain things that I've gone through in life that I have ruminated on and you kind of just want to feel this relief and the relief is by going from your head and into your body. So the definition of rumination is a deep or considered thought about something. So rumination is analyzing things in your mind. It's a cerebral process. It's a process where Maybe something happened to you where you went through a breakup or something happened at work and you can't stop thinking about it and you're overthinking and you're thinking about what happened and you're replaying it in your mind over and over again and you're thinking about what happened a month ago and kind of like trying to piece that together and it's just this overthinking thought and I don't know if you've noticed this, but it doesn't take you anywhere. Ruminating about things and overanalyzing things is going to maybe bring you a little bit of awareness about some wounds that you have, but it's not really going to take you anywhere because it's a cognitive process that you're up in your mind and your body desires to feel. Your body wants to feel the sensations that are accompanied with what happened in the event. And those sensations can be scary. And they can feel overwhelming because they're very visceral. It's a lot to hold in your body. And this is the work that I do with my clients is creating that capacity for them to feel and tolerate these sensations so that they can just process all of this through their body. And when you're ruminating on something, you are procrastinating the process of feeling and feeling those emotions, those sensations in your body. And so we go through these thought loops. We intellectualize every little thing. We call our friends and want to talk about what happened, what we think happened, who we think is in the wrong. We just want to talk about things over and over again because that delays the process of us dropping into our bodies and feeling those sensations because often what sparks that rumination is like maybe a wound was scratched. Maybe something happened that kind of bumped up against the core wound that we have. So we think about it over and over again so we don't have to feel it. And this is, again, why sometimes people, and I'm never going to talk bad about traditional talk therapy. It's not that, but people do kind of plateau in talk therapy because it's really just addressing your thought patterns. And I think what's really cool is that there are a lot of therapists that are including somatic work into their therapy sessions. So that's really cool. But if you feel like you have really plateaued in talk therapy and you're not really seeing much improvement in your life, it's because you're just talking about the problems and you're not being able to feel it and move it in your body. I think it can be relieving when you understand that this rumination is just a deep pathway in your brain that you have often gone down to avoid your feelings. And by feelings, I mean the sensations in your body, those felt senses that accompany an emotion. 
So that can sometimes just bring immediate relief because you know, okay, this is just an old pathway in my brain that I've gone down so often. So tying this again back into when we are talking about neuroplasticity and how our bodies take the path of least resistance, we go down those familiar pathways of rumination, avoiding our feelings, avoiding those sensations because it's comfortable. Have you ever driven down a road before where you're, it's so familiar? Maybe it's your neighborhood that you've lived in for over 10 years. And it's like, you know, where every little groove in the road is, you know exactly when to turn. You probably could do it with your eyes closed. Obviously, we're not going to do that or just like really zoned out. And you're like, how did I even get here? It's because that road is so familiar. But then let's say you go on vacation and you're in a rental car and you're driving down a road you've never been on before and it's at night. You have both hands on the steering wheel and you are staring out the windshield like paying so much attention to that road because it's unfamiliar. It's new. It takes a lot of effort. And sometimes it's kind of stressful. Like I know when I drive new places, I feel a little bit of stress in my body. So it takes more effort and it's a little bit more daunting. And we're tempted to just stick to those roads that are familiar. That makes sense that we can almost do in our sleep because it just takes less effort. And our bodies are so intelligent. They want to focus on staying alive. They want to focus on feeling safe. And so driving down those roads that are unfamiliar is going to look different. But here is where the biggest game changer can be when you're looking to stop overthinking and step into feeling and just really make any kind of behavior change through neuroplasticity is You might notice yourself driving down that familiar road. You might notice yourself maybe thinking about a situation for days and avoiding the thinking process of it. And you're going to start to recognize when you're driving down that road. But it takes effort. You got to reverse out of that road and choose the new pathway of driving down a road that maybe is dark, requires a little bit more effort, and can be a little bit scary at first. And that is when it comes to overthinking, that is the process of moving from your brain and into your body. It's the process of stopping overthinking and telling yourself, okay, I notice I am ruminating about this situation. I'm ruminating about this argument that I got in with my husband for days now. Let me stop and think. Let me reverse out of that road that I usually go down that's really familiar, that's just ruminating over and over and over again, calling my friends, calling my mom, calling my sister, telling them all about this event. Let me reverse out of here and go down the road of feeling. So it's a process. And it doesn't mean you're just going to automatically pick that new pathway because it takes time. It takes time to get to know this road. It takes time to maybe even build this road. Maybe it's a gravel road and it's turning into a paved road. And we just have to start with first getting the weeds out of the way and laying the gravel down and then the dirt down and then the actual road down. It takes time to create these new neural pathways. But the first step is kind of recognizing when you're going down that old familiar pathway of rumination, when you're just spending days thinking about something, it's because you are avoiding sensation. You're avoiding the feeling. And when you go down this new pathway of feeling and being in your body, it's not going to make logical sense. It's not going to, you're not going to be able to just like talk your way into it. It's more of a feeling of just feeling the sensations in your body and you will be flooded with peace. You will be able to release some of those kind of grit that your brain had on wanting to overthink the situation. And often when we are overthinking, we also feel like that gives us some level of control that by ruminating on something, we are somewhat in control of a situation that we feel out of control. And In order to create that space to hold sensations in your body, you have to learn how to feel safe in your body. 
we often don't feel safe with sensation and that's why we push it away and choose to ruminate on the situation instead of feel it. And this is, again, the process that I take my clients through learning how to build capacity, build safety in the body so that we can feel things and we can spend more time being in our bodies than doing because overthinking, it's not productive. It can feel productive. It can feel like you're accomplishing something because you're in control. You're thinking about something, but it's not productive. It's not getting you anywhere. And what's actually going to get you to that peaceful feeling that you're desiring, that feeling of freedom, that feeling of embodiment is by holding sensation in your body. It's by creating safety within. And that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of all the work that I do with my clients. But I hope that this example made sense on how an occupational therapist with a background in neuro rehab and helping patients for many, many years be able to create those new neural pathways in their brain after a spinal cord injury, stroke, brain injury, and how that translates to healing from trauma and creating new neural pathways in your brain after a trauma or just, again, a lifetime of ups and downs of life. Because let's be honest, it's 2024 now. I think we can all agree that this life is not easy. There's things that happen. We see it on the news all the time. We see things on our phones. We are constantly inundated with traumatic things. And even just going out in the community, sometimes there's things that can happen that can be really traumatic and it can totally alter your brain. And I think that this is just important to know that when you are healing and when you are stepping into the safety of your body, it's not supposed to make sense. And that's not because it's a woo-woo process at all. It's not at all. It is something that is actually a process and it's something that is so healing and helpful and something that I think more and more people are starting to open up to and it's just becoming like a normal thing and it's not seen as such like a woo-woo thing. It's just normal. I really truly hope that this helps you Learn that when you are ruminating about something, it's just a sign that you are not feeling safe with feeling the sensations in your body that are associated with whatever wound this scratched up again. And so if you're desiring to learn how to cultivate that sense of safety within, that is a conversation that we can talk about because through my one-on-one programs, my group programs, you can learn how to cultivate the sense of safety in your body so that you can create the new neural pathways where you choose the feeling over the thinking and doing and being air quotes productive because that's not productive. What's productive is learning how to just feel totally dropped into your body and learning how to be in your body and you will feel so at peace. If you listen to my podcast last week with Faith about cortisol and your nervous system, this is what helps you lower your cortisol and lower those stress responses in your body is by learning how to feel these things. And it's, it's so crazy when you learn how to feel and be in your body, those things that you're ruminating about kind of magically go away and you feel okay with things. And again, it doesn't make sense. You don't have to write it all out and like give bullet points on this argument that you maybe had with your husband that you can just feel and things kind of feel better. And then if there is a conversation that needs to happen, you can converse from such a grounded, safe place in your body. And it's going to come across with so much more grace because you are embodied and you're not up in your head. So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. I would love, love, love if you send me a message, let me know how this episode lands. And of course, I love reading your reviews. I love seeing your thoughts about the podcast. So please write a review. Let me know how this podcast is helpful and some other topics that maybe you would like to learn about. And I'm excited to see you guys next week. Okay, my loves, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I really love hearing from you all about how the show resonated with you and would love it if you sent me a DM on Instagram to at her body wisdom to keep the convo going. 
If you are loving the show, it would mean so much to me if you left a quick rating and review on Apple or Spotify. Thank you so much for listening. Catch you next time.